give us a sense of how your kind of mediation and conflict resolution works. We have, we like to think of them as community restorative practices. So we have what's called judicial committee, and that is our main driving force of how rule breaking is handled or what happens from rule breaking. First off, it's important to mention that we have over 300 rules. They were all designed from our community by our community. They are all individually voted upon. Everyone is crafted in school meeting and has been since our origination. So we started with no rules, ended up with 300 some from problem solving in JC. So that's how rules are established first off. So then we have what's called uh, JC report forms that the judicial committee mm. hears every day if there are some. We change the language of those to be less a little bit less reflective of the court system than they once were. They used mm. to have plaintiff, defendant, guilty, not guilty on them. And we felt uh -huh. as though that was triggering to some of our students unnecessarily. So we changed them objectively now to reporter, subject, and what rule you feel like was broken and purely the definition of what happened, our description rather of what happened. So it's very objective and just writing down a JC report once you feel as though someone wronged you or broke a rule is very cathartic to our students. So that's where a lot of the mm -hmm. restor restoration comes into play. There is just mm -hmm. writing it down, mm -hmm. knowing that your community, community will handle it and not having to worry about it. But we do have a mm -hmm. judicial committee it works like jury duty almost and how you have to serve on it. Mm. I believe it's two weeks a year. Um, everyone has to serve no matter of age. And we all have one vote, which is equal, like staff vote isn't, doesn't take precedent or, or more weighing over a student vote. They're all the same. And it's just, uh, we have a JC clerk that's a voted on position. It's a student led position primarily. So that's the acting judge that sits at the table, and then you have everyone sitting around. You have a scribe that writes and takes takes notes on what happens during the cases, and then everyone talks about them. And once they talk mm. about them, they then vote on the findings so that they all agree on what happened. Once what has happened is has been parsed through or gone through, we then talk about what are possible consequences or things that a student would have to do to give back to your community as a result from breaking rules. Usually that looks like going and helping Caroline out in the garden, or if you make a mess, you've got to clean it up. Things that just common sense make sense. Sometimes it can be if you were found to have done something more harsh in an area, you could be banned from that area or you would have to give back in some other way. So we really try to keep the things that are happen as, as not punishment in that way. They shouldn't feel too weighted. It mm -hmm. should never be at saying sorry or imposing upon that way. Mm. It should also, it should always feel like you're giving back to your community restoratively. So if something mm. is more of an interpersonal communication issue, it can be had in mediation. So mediation is something that we also have available for our students. It's not as widely used as JC. JC is a daily occurrence and mediation is only sometimes if parties agree. But that is available also that we have for our students if they choose. Is that adult mediators or is it also kid mediators? How does that? It's also students. I mean, it's it's Look. people that have signed up as as mediators in our program. So we had community mediators come in and sort of teach us how to do it, educate us on what mediation mm. looks like for us to be able to duplicate it. So it was people that signed up in that process. That's how a lot of things work yeah. in our community. It's just a sign up basis. So if you're interested in something, you have the ability to sign up all the way from maintaining our building to hiring our staff. <laughs> this is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.